Hello, hello, welcome to my new video, Meraki Wi-Fi Best Practices Deploying Guest and Internal SSID Networks. So what I want to show you on this video is how to create SSIDs using the Meraki portal. And uh, this is a basic video. If you are an experienced Wi-Fi user, this may not be the video for you. So uh, once you log in to Meraki Wi-Fi, you would go to wireless SSIDs and that'll show you the SSIDs that you have enabled on, on your system. As you could see, I only have two SSIDs enabled on my system, but Meraki allows me to create up to 15 different SSIDs. So what I want to do is enable the SSIDs that I'm going to work on. It's going to be unconfigured 10, unconfigured 11. I'm going to save the changes. Uh, let me go back to SSID. So I only see the ones that I want to work on. And once I'm here, I'm going to have the SSIDs enabled. Something to keep in mind though is that once you enable the SSID, the default configuration is going to be open with Meraki DHCP, meaning that at this point anyone is going to be able to see these SSIDs and connect to them with no password and get an IP address from Meraki DHCP, which is good, but still they're going to have internet access. So uh, just make sure that if you don't want anyone to have internet access during your configuration process, you uh, enter a password to it. So let's go into the configuration. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to rename the SSID. And you <coughs> would name it um, whatever you want to name it. Office Guest. Then I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to edit settings. And once you are here, you're going to have many configuration options for this specific SSID. Something to keep in mind, though, is that you're going to be able to switch SSIDs and configure the settings to that corresponding SSIDs from this drop down menu. If you want, I usually go back to the main page and come back here. So since this is going to be a guest SSID, I am going to leave it as no encryption, meaning that users are going to see the SSID and they're going to be able to connect to it without entering a password. Uh, then I'm going to scroll down here to a splash page and it's up to you if you want to use splash page or not. I usually create a splash or enable the splash page for guest SSIDs and I'm going to do click through which means that as soon as the users connect to the Wi-Fi network, they're going to be prompted with a captive portal and that's going to have a message and they have to click on a button to continue and gain internet access. So um, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to scroll down to oh, captive portal strength. What this means is that when users connect to your network, they're going to be presented with a captive portal message. And you'll have the option of blocking non-HTTP traffic or blocking all traffic until the user accepts the terms and conditions that you have on the captive portal. Right? So you could do block all access until user until sign on is complete, which means that the user only has to acknowledge the um, the message on the captive portal. Then I would go down to uh, this uh, client IP assignment and since this is going to be a guest SSID, I'm going to have NAT mode enabled to use Meraki DHCP. What it means is that users that connect to the guest network are going to get an IP address coming from Cisco Meraki on this segment down here. Once I have those um, settings, I'm going to click Save. 
and once I'm back here I'm gonna go to wireless firewall and traffic shaping and again keep in mind that this is for my office guest SSID as you see here and um, as you could see the default um, rule or firewall rule is for the guest network to access your local LAN. Since this is a guest network, you do not want them to access your local LAN, so you're going to deny this. Save. And it's up to you if you want to implement layer 7 firewall rules to your guest network. It's a guest network that is open, so it's up to you. Even on guest networks, I usually um, enabled uh, the uh, blocking um, P2P and also denying, uh, let's see what else is here, business management, video and music, news, gaming, sports, and that's pretty much it, like, you know, just denying P2P, that way they don't consume your bandwidth. If you have a specific um, ports or IP ranges or host names that you would like to block, you can do that down here as well. And if you have a Cisco umbrella subscription, you can even implement more settings for firewall configurations. Then I'm going to come down here to tra traffic shaping rules. Right now, the default um, bandwidth is unlimited. Since this is a guest network, I'm going to limit that to maybe, you know, 5 megabits per second, and that's going to be per SSID, SSID bandwidth limit. It's not going to be unlimited, so I'm going to limit my SSID bandwidth to a maximum of 25 megabits per second. So what it means is that the maximum or the fastest connections user, users can get is about 5 megabits per second, and the total bandwidth for the SSID, in this case, is going to be the office guest SSID. It's going to be a maximum of 25 megabits per second. So what happens if you have a lot of users consuming a lot of bandwidth? Well, this is going to take precedence. So the, uh, the SSID is only going to allow up to 25 megabits per second. Uh, if you have some uh, specific uh, traffic shaping rules that you would like to implement you can do that down here once you have those settings enabled you can click save oh we had an error because i um i added this rule with no um, host name so i'm just gonna delete this i'm gonna come down here and do it again and here i have my um SSID configure. So let me go on back here. And here I have my office guest with my settings. Now for my office um, SSID, the process is going to be exactly the same, except for the um, IP routing that I want the SSID to use. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to rename this to um, office employees I'm gonna save I'm gonna go to edit settings uh, since this is my office employees I want to make sure that I secure that network access with a password and um, Meraki also offers different settings uh, to secure your Wi-Fi network. It, most of the time, we recommend companies to use 802.1x for authentication, but this time, this is a basic video, so we're just going to do pre-share key. So we have the password. We're not going to do a splash page, but you have the option of doing that even in your office. And this is something that usually legal gets involved. Um, 
you know, they want to display some messages even for employees. So it's up to them. But you have the option of just like not selecting that. You go to none network access. And then when it comes to address uh, assignment, you want to do bridge mode. Right. So uh, once you come here, if you have VLANs configures in your environment, this is where you're going to tag the VLAN to this SSID. Right, I could do um, 80 if I want. Um, and then I'm going to click save. Once it is safe, I'm going to go to wireless traffic shaping rules. Let me come here. So right here on your layer three firewall rules, you may or may not want users connecting to that SSID to access your network. I assume that this is going to be a um, an SSID for employees, so you would like them to access your networks. So there's nothing here. Uh, when it comes to um, layer seven firewall rules, right? Like you might want to do something similar here, block all P2P. You may want to come down here and also block, uh, um, I don't know, like depending on your company policy, you may want to block video and music. I don't know why you would do that, uh, but hey, there are reasons for that, right? <laughs> so, or you may want to do, let's say, what else do we have in here? Uh, right here, like business management. But you can block all business management applications for a work environment. You might be in trouble if you did that. But anyway, so this is just an example of the layer seven firewall rules that you can implement. Traffic shaping rules is completely up to you if you want to enable and or not enable this. And then you would do um, save. And once you have done that, you have configured two Meraki's SSIDs, one for your guests and one for your office employees. As you could see, the process is the exact same process for both of them. What's gonna change is the configuration that you are going to apply to the SSIDs. I hope it helps, have a great day.